Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at this lovely afternoon and with the very hot seasons. So today we are proudly invited the doctor there from our the Faculty of Science, Utah, that will have the little sharing with us into the topic that recently is quite a um, hot topic in Malaysia. Okay, so this is about the introductions of the metal oxide nanoparticles and its applications in daily life. So later on, the doctor will brief uh, with us uh, what, act what actually is a metal oxide nanoparticle and the histories of the nanoparticles and uh, what the coming uh, trends in Malaysia or in the futures. Uh, later on, we're going to start officially at 4 p.m. So uh, now we are still waiting for the others to join us. And yeah, for your information, uh, after the sharing of the Dr. Terra, if we have the Q&A sections, we can just drop your questions into the chat box. We'll pick up the questions to answer accordingly. And yeah, due to the limited hour we have, right? I'm sorry that if we are not able to answer all the questions. So uh, um, in case we cannot finish all the questions, maybe we can just collect and send the answer through the email to you all. Yeah, for your information, sir, is it today's the webinar? Not only we are doing it in the Zoom, also we're going to share live to the Facebook, our Facebook home, uh, the channel is the Utah for you. So in case you have any friends or you have any the colleagues that not able to join us through the Zoom, maybe they can just join us through the Facebook. They can just uh, log into our um, Utah for you, the page, like us, and they can, um, 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 they can go through the sharing um, at the Facebook. Also, if um, you are now in the Facebook and um, you have anything, uh, any questions to ask, you can just drop it to the comments. Then we will pick up the questions to answer. Later, after the sharing is finished, we have the evaluation forms for you to fill up. At least you can just uh, have a feedback to us to encourage us to do the uh, more better in the future. So it's almost the 4 p.m. and no longer deal, just let us start from today's the webinar, the sharing. And before we invite the Dr. Tay to have a sharing with us, just let me to have a brief introduction of Utah as well as to, to the Dr. Tay. Okay. So in case for those that are not familiar with the Utah, this is the locations of the Utah campus. We have two campuses, the one at the Kampra campus, locations at the Para. The other one is the Sungalong campus at the Selangor state. So um, today's the VIP, Dr. Tay actually is from the Faculty of Science that located at the Kampra campus. And you can see that um, through the pictures, Kampra campus um, is about uh, 1,300 acres, but this is just a partial of our, um, uh, this is a partial of our properties. Because um, still got a lot of the land and the property in Utah is haven't been developed. So Utah actually is quite potential, especially um, now we are actually uh, have our hospital under construction and going to be operate around 2022. The other one is the Sungai campus. Difference with the Kampar, the Sungai campus actually is the two different huge buildings that at the uh, Sungai Long. When you drive into the Sungai Long, definitely going to see the Utah buildings. And this is a ranking that we earned and um, through the THE Times Higher Education that um, from the 2021st, we actually been ranked 501 to 600 into the world university ranking under the PhD. Uh, in other words, actually we are the second best university in Malaysia and um, counted in all surrounded the Asia, actually we are being ranked 119. So this is uh, quite um, honor that uh, being it's quite proud that actually we've been ranked so high because um, actually Utah is just uh, um, 
young university that less than 20 years been developed. So um, in within 20 years, we can even achieve so um, high ranking is a quite proud um, uh, achieve, uh, achievement for this. So this is uh, just something I share with you. And yeah, we come to Dr. Tay. So today's VIP is Dr. Tay Lai Hot. This is the background of the Dr. Tay. And he earns the, by the Bachelor of Science into the University of London and eventually to get the uh, PhD in the Cardiff University. Currently, Dr. Tay is the um, assist assistant professor um, under the UCAR Faculty of Science. And today, um, he will share the reasons, the nanoparticles uh, trends with us. And now, uh, we are invited uh, Dr. Tay to start the presentations. Hi, Dr. Tay. Ah, hi, Mr. Tom. Thank you very much for your uh, general introduction <laughs> uh, about myself. Yeah, but I don't think I'm a VIP, but anyway, um, first of all, um, I'm just like you, any lecturers, yeah? So basically we've been uh, working, what we, what we did is that uh, involved with research and then, uh, well, I would say extensive research. Uh, this is our KPI. <laughs> and then uh, we've been doing teaching as well. Um, of course, I'm from the uh, Department of Chemical Science and then uh, my major is actually biochemistry. Um, I think I see some of my students yeah, actually um, do appear as part of the participants. Yeah. All right, um, first of all, good afternoon and uh, welcome you see, to uh, our webinar. All right, today is the, I'm gonna talk, oh, I will say a little bit of sharing about some general um, research that's been going on globally. And then of course in uh, Utah as well. Uh, so of course, uh, me and my colleagues, we are actually um, part of the um, well team, you see, that have been working on the uh, nanotechnology, you see. So of course, uh, part of this nanotechnology, we, um, we use metal oxide nanoparticles. So today, of course, uh, I will try to give you some uh, general introduction about what is exactly um, nanotechnology or metal oxide nanoparticles. And then, of course, uh, we will go through some uh, application. So, for example, let's say um, in the field of nanomedicine. Now, because this day is easy, um, if you look at the doctors uh, or, or the patient who are going to admit for a surgery, you see, uh, so those uh, equipments or the uh, materials or even the drugs you see they've been using on the patient are actually consist of nanotechnology. Uh, so of course, uh, nanotechnology is not something new. You see, so it has been um, been part of our life for centuries. It's just that uh, somehow in the beginning of year of two thousand, uh, millennium age uh, after the millennium, you see. So what it did is that uh, it start bombarding, and then uh, a lot of people you see been uh, very happy with it and then uh, they will start like uh, exploring it exploit it and then see what type of um, potential you see uh, applications that we can actually dig in you see the can the outcome of it all right so um, let's see from the beginning how we'll start my slides okay so um, a general introduction about my profile so um, actually my first degree is uh, of course is the uh, biochemistry so I graduated from Queen Mary. So it's actually uh, part of the University of London. And then uh, once I've, well, same as most of the undergrads, so I kick off uh, after my undergrad, I'll kick off to uh, Cardiff to uh, get my PhD. So uh, I actually, uh, under my boss supervisor known as Prof. Rudolf Allerman, who are currently a uh, pro vice chancellor of Cardiff University. Uh, so uh, somehow I'm very fortunate, I uh, managed to join his research team. Uh, so he has been uh, extensively researching uh, protein engineering uh, and then involved with biosensors and uh, artificial amino acid as well. Uh, and uh, most of them is about chemistry stuff. Yeah. Okay, so my research interest. Yes, I've joined Utah since um, 2011. Uh, so it's been quite a while already. And then uh, I've been doing uh, part of my research. I have my research team as well. And then uh, we've been working on microalgae cultivation and harvesting. So microalgae is basically a photosynthetic bacteria. 
uh, a green tiny uh, bacteria that actually uh, very quite valuable because uh, in industry is it been uh, exploiting a lot about this microalgae as well and then of course there's a lot of these uh, nutrient is it, as well so we've been working on it and then uh, work on enzyme purification and characterization and then working on natural products so we uh, my group my research group did uh, what we did is that the, uh, we try to extract natural products from a natural plant source usually we target plant material anyway and then try to study their, their antioxidant properties and so on. And I'm working on the uh, solid waste and wastewater treatment as well, using uh, physical chemical and biology curve method as well. And then, uh, of course, we use nanotechnology, so which is actually metal oxide nanoparticles. Okay, so basically this is the, my general profile about myself. Okay, now before I'm going to start off with the, uh, the lectures. Now, this is the acknowledgement. Uh, because later on, you see, you'll find out that all the images uh, and then even the video from, uh, from the presentation uh, is actually obtained from Google search. And then, of course, we have Wikipedia, YouTube. Uh, so these are the main general uh, website, you see, where we can actually uh, locate all these uh, information. So, of course, following other people or site whom I'm very grateful for their efforts uh, because they actually designed and created the slides and then shaped. Uh, through the online free, you see. So we can actually just download it and then uh, use it as a material, you see. Now, for some students, maybe if you are uh, part of the uh, biochemistry students uh, program, you see, you realize that the uh, nanotechnology, you see, is actually, uh, be, will be taught, uh, will be uh, in the one of the, uh, as a part of syllabus as well. Uh. So therefore, you can actually use this as a material for lectures as well, uh, future. Okay, so these are the general, uh, okay, the person, the list of people. So we have Prof. Dr. Alberto, uh, because uh, he's actually a professor. Lah. So um, I have these, uh, his slides, lecture slides, and then we have these, uh, maybe a group of students, Miriam, Jason, and Eric. And then uh, we have the website of Nano Diode. So basically, and then we have this uh, Alan G, uh, Mr. Alan G. So he's a CEO or co-founder of Southern Technology. So he's been working on nanotechnology for the past yeah, well, couple of years and decades. And then, of course, uh, there will be a Pennsylvania State University lecture slide as well. Okay, so these are the, uh, the area where I can act, well, obtain the information. So, of course, do, uh, we have some uh, references do actually uh, list down as well, and then some interesting link for you all to play around with. Now, what exactly is nano? Nanotech, you see, is actually science or it could be an engineering, and then it could be a technology, you see, conducted at a nanoscale. Uh, so we are talking about one to 100 nanometer. So it's a very tiny uh, size, you see. So nano can refer uh, to technologies, materials that we are actually focusing, you see, and uh, on the, uh, of course, they've been workplace more widely. Uh. So if we're comparing, you see, the size of it, uh, so it's about a sheet of paper, you see, about 100,000 nanometer thick. So a human hair is around uh, that region as well, lah, nanometer wide as well. So if we look at the, uh, the size, you see, so of course we have this uh, comparing a giant earthworm, you see, and then we human and then plant, uh, a bow, a dodo bird, you see. So, and then in terms of it, you see, it's a very small uh, nanomaterial. So, so it's like you're scaling up, you see, uh, the size of it, you see. Like magnetic, well, you're trying to minimize it back to the small uh, scale of it. Uh, of course, if we look at DNA, uh, so our cells, you see, are consist of nucleic acid DNA. So we have those uh, what, twist and turn of the DNA. So those sizes, you see, the distance uh, is approximate 1.7 nanometer. So we can see that it's very small, you see. So that's what exactly is nanotechnology, you see. Okay, now, for example, let's say if we comparing the scale, you see, nanometers. Ah, so we have this, um, sorry, water molecule. So at 10 power minus one meter, and then glucose, and then slowly you become much uh, bigger, bigger in terms of sizes. And then of course, hey, is 10 power five. Uh, then of course, tennis ball you see, is somewhere around eight, 10 power eight. So we can see that the, uh, as it growing up, uh, uh, the term, the type of different sizes, you see, we can see that there's a change of it. 
So of course, nano um, devices, all those is between 10 to 10 power of two. Lah. So same, some is very small, lah, we'll say. Okay, type of nano materials. Uh, so nano materials, it can occur naturally or it can be produced by human activity. So either as a product of another activity. So usually it's on purpose or maybe we call it as uh, engineering uh, or engineer products. Uh. Uh, so let's say our focus uh, is an uh, engineer nanomaterials, you see, as they are designed and integrated into the product because of the specific characteristic. Now, if you look at this table form, you see, I mean, uh, a simple table, I would say. Okay, natural occurring, for example, let's say forest fire, uh, mineral composite, volcanic ash. So these are natural stuff. And then those are due uh, human activity or human origin. So for example, we can see that things like like, like um, changing uh, the, the scales of this activity. Uh, so like cooking smoke are due to human. Uh, uh, diesel exhaust, industry influence. So all these are created by humans. So of course, beside that, uh, we talk about biosynthesis or bio and trying to engineering it, you see, like metals. Metals are not um, appear in natural. So for example, let's say alloys. Uh, alloys, you see, is a combination of uh, two different or, or two or more different type of metals. So those are actually being engineered. Now, buckyballs and nanotubes. So these are examples of uh, nanotechnology as well, uh, because these are the uh, the building up, or maybe we call it the uh, building starting material. You see, for a big, more um, let's say, a more strong structure. You see, uh, so these are the, for example, let's say carbon nanotube. Yeah. Then the uh, sunscreen pigment or nano capsules. They all these are nanotechnology. All right, so these are examples of the uh, nanotechnology. So we have these, um, now these days they have this called rubber nano zinc oxide. Now, what it does is that the, um, these days in industry, you see, they were trying to create some like water repellent rubber. Uh, so imagine your, your rubber glove, uh, you have this uh, water repellent. So mm -hmm. when you dig into a dye or color solution, you see, it will not stick on your glove. So it's easy for you to, uh, to to the person, you see, to wear on a glove and then you try to don, uh, don, soak your stamples and so on, you see, without actually uh, causing your glove being uh, stick with all those colors, uh, important uh, or maybe expensive uh, color dye, you see. And then, of course, we have this uh, fullerene. So fullerene is actually the buckyball. So it's sound, uh, it basically shaped like the football. And then, of course, we have these uh, carbon nanotubes. Uh, now, these days, you see, people have been using it for uh, building, let's say, electronic gadgets, yeah, or maybe even uh, rackets, let's say, like badminton rackets. So all these have uh, these are carbon nanotubes because they are much more stronger, you see, in terms of tensile, uh, tensile strength, like you see. All right, introduction. So is nanotechnology, you see, the gateway to the future for human beings on Earth? Uh, so will the technology and science, you see, develop with nanotechnology, you see, will lead to monumental breakthrough. For example, let's say um, improve in our quality of life or access to a quality food. And even, for example, let's say a better water sources as well. Because these days, we mentioned about uh, increase uh, or expand of human population. Uh, so what will happen to the uh, quantity and quality of food? And then, of course, when we talk mention about you know uh, fresh water these days, is it uh, because due to uh, pollution, is it so? Uh, is it possible to get more fresh water to support us? Uh, so, of course, nanotechnology could be the one of the ideal method. And then, beside that, um, how about diseases? Uh, for these days, is it COVID nineteen? Uh, because now in Malaysia, is it a company? Uh, uh, for example, let's say the. Uh, uh, there's this research, well, certain board, you see, what happened is that they're in charge, they're involved with the research in nanotechnology. So what they did, what it does is that they, they claim, you see, they can actually uh, assist the government uh, by helping us to uh, reduce any problem and improving the economy through nanotechnology as well. And then the uh, uh, alternative of the uh, fossil fuel, uh, it could be oil and gas, so could nanotechnology uh, assist it. Uh, so these are the things, you see, uh, that what we are trying to achieve or hope that you will be able to be achieved, you see. So of course, there's a lot of things that we can think of. So that's why uh, 
where we are putting here, you see, where does your imagine take you? So could nanotechnology, you see, would be the one that actually bring us uh, to that so-called target, you see. Okay, now, some of these, you see, are the uh, examples of commercial available nanotech products. Uh, so uh, these products, you see, uh, already in the market and then uh, or under research, uh, but uh, most of the stuff, uh, majority, you see, is already on the market, commercial available, we'll say. So, for example, let's say high-performance ski bags. Uh, so these are actually applied to our skin so that we do not feel very cold or get frostbite. Uh, so we maintain our body temperature, so prevent any moisture loss. And then uh, second example, we have this uh, tiny 3D printed battery. Uh, so this type of uh, battery is it? usually uh, very popular to uh, electronic com uh, com uh, industry uh, or even let's say a biosensor. So they're using this type of technology as well. And then um, another type is wrinkle resistant or stain repellent thread. Uh, those are usually for clothes. Uh, and then uh, deep penetrating skin cream. Uh, L'Oreal is actually uh, one of the company who are using uh, nanotechnology as well. Uh, and then uh, uh, this one of the most popular ones, uh, OLED. Uh, so these days, if you go to the electronic uh, shops, you see OLED television. Uh, now we even we have OLED digital camera, you see. Okay, now uh, nanotech DVD book collection now these days also uh, using this uh, nanotechnology to protect it from being uh, uh, either the uh, papers being oxidized or being uh, chewed up you see by the termites uh. performance sunglasses uh, also use the uh, nanotechnology as a coating here uh, so prevent any uh, uh, blue led light uh, and then uh, the U or excessive of this uh, uv light as well now these days and then, of course, na nano crystalline uh, sunscreen as well can be used. Uh. All these are examples. Now, the most important thing is it about global nanotechnology market. So, why people are so key or so keen is it because nanotechnology market is it the claim you see what happened is that they expected uh, to exceed US 125 billion mark by the year of 2024. Now, all sort of you. Uh, as you name it, you see, for example, electronic, energy, biomedical, cosmetic, defense, automotive, agriculture. So all of them, you see, will require the assistance of nanotechnology. So we can see that, you see, there's a lot of potential, you see, that we can actually um, explore, you see, out from it. And then, of course, if term of grant, we can actually apply it, uh, what, application uh, from government or industry, you see, uh, so that we can actually support our research. All right, now, these are the general, uh, I believe that those movies, uh, those uh, movie lovers is it, so it should have some general idea who are they. So for example, I say Iron Man, Terminator, uh, Transformer, uh, we know that all these robots, you see. And then of course, Resident Evil, uh, when we talk about mutation due to the uh, what pollution, uh, due to the uh, cosmetic company, but don't worry, you see, uh, nanotechnology uh, will not cause mutation uh, or else you see will be like uncle roger say hi uh we're in deep shit la, huh? but anyway so nanotechnology is something that uh essential to us you see uh, where we can actually help uh, improve you see the quality of our life now emergence when in because we will not we need to know is it like when it exactly this nanotechnology start like bombarding to our life, you see, or getting heat. Okay, so of course, it appeared that the word, you see, nanotechnology uh, is becoming ubiquitous, you see. Just about every way you turn, you see, you will heard about it, read about it, or even advertisement also claim or talk about nanotechnology, you see. Now, in the movie, uh, for example, you see, Terminator 3, uh, this by the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, so what happened is that the uh, in the year of 2003, uh, this movie is it's been quite a long period of time. Uh, we're talking about 17 years ago. Uh, he he actually mentioned, is it in uh, what well, is actually a plot? Uh, he said, is Arsenal, is it include nanotechnological transjector? Uh, then it can control other machine. Means that we're talking about nanobots. Uh, so all this is it is nanotechnology again. 
Uh, so you have these small, tiny robots. You can actually just uh, invade other computers or, or, or machine, you see, and then you can just take over their command, you see, and then imagine that uh, the uh, power of this nanobot, you see. Of course, uh, on January 21, year 2000, um, President Clinton, at that time, uh, uh, President Clinton, still the uh, President of the United States, it announced that um, almost $500 million uh, have been actually um, commitment uh, for the field of nanotechnology. Uh, so you can imagine that uh, since year 2000, uh, um, United States you see, has already played the uh, major role uh, by uh, researching you see, or, or research uh, these uh, so-called nanotech so that what can actually uh, improve our life, you see. Okay, then of course, the um, in the Texas as well, so Governor Rick Perry also proclaimed that the uh, during the conference, uh, so what happened is that at that time, is it the conference, what he did is that one of the researchers is show about this nanocar. Now, why we call nanocar is it because this it's actually molecule, you see, they created that exactly like a car, so you have a four wheel, and then somehow it can glide through the surface of molecule. Uh, so therefore, we call it as a nano car, you see. Okay, so after this presentation, uh, the governor very happy with it, and then they say that they will invest even more money, you see, into it. Uh, so that what will happen is that uh, nanotechnology uh, can be initiated. So at that time, it's a taxes, uh, uh, is one of the uh, earlier states, you see, that actually uh, getting this uh, so-called research, you see, uh, and then from there and onward, uh, uh, their way is actually become a global thing, you see. All right, nanotechnology language. Uh, so many similar yet differing definition uh, about nanotechnology exceeds. For example, so it will not be unrealistic to receive hundreds of heat uh, from the search engine, for example, Uncle Google, uh, which all of us actually uh, quite like to use. So if you type, you see keywords of nanotechnology, you see in the search field, and then it basically come up with a lot of these uh, answers. So for example, let's say probably you end up uh, nanobio, nanodots, nanowires, nanoelectronics, nanobots, and so on, you see. So basically all these uh, are actually part of nanotechnology language. Uh, so you imagine that it, uh, it's not something new already uh, for these days. Okay. So this is actually something we we'll call it as, um, let's say back to a brief history, you see. Now the concept of nanotechnology, you see, is not new, you see, to nature or to mankind. Because um, an early example of man-made, you see, nanoprocess is actually stained glass. Now, if we, by any chance, if we visit a uh, cathedral or a big church or abbey, so you realize, you see, the window glass panel, uh, which actually uh, have this uh, painting uh, about the history or the story of the uh, Lord of Jesus Christ and so on, about the God, you see, about the Christianity. Uh, you realize that those colors, you see, uh, those color is actually a metal color, uh, consists of metal. So these are actually part of the um, nanotechnology as well, uh, because um, this they've been using these um, small nano sized gold particles uh, to create the different colors, you see. So it's quite interesting, you see. So of course, uh, gold particles are display a different form of color depending on the size at the nano scale. So gold at a larger scale, like the macro scale, such as gold brick will reflect the well-known yellowish color. Uh, so therefore, why we observe uh, yellow color bar uh, because the uh, the size of it is it this color uh, the gold. Okay, now a uh, brief history. So like um, how or who actually started it? Uh, so one of the earliest, um, very early, uh, what was it? The the, the so-called like history, the origin uh, is actually 1974. So imagine now it's 2021, and then now we're back to 1974. A professor known as Taniguchi you see, from the Tokyo University of Science. So he's the one that actually started this terminology uh, I mentioned about this nanotechnology. So to describe the science and technology of processing or building parts with nanometric tolerance. 
So he's basically his research stuff was in the area of high precision machining, you see. So a nanometer like, is a unit of length in the metric system, so equal to one billion of a meter. Uh, so it's a very small size, you see. So of course, um, Professor Taniguchi as well, uh, his theoretical concept involved with the use of electrons, uh, iron beam and laser beam uh, processor for the machine tolerance uh, at the nanoscale. Okay, and then another uh, scientist or researcher is it that work uh, with who is actually working on the um, nanotechnology as well is Dr. Richard Feynman. Uh, so he's the uh, what happened is that the first well documented talk uh, on the possibility of nanotechnology was made by uh, him because uh, beside that, because he'd been doing this extensively, uh, extensive work. Uh, uh, in the quantum mechanics, uh, and then uh, he's actually a great physician, uh, physicist, sorry. So what happened is that uh, later on, his uh, acknowledgement uh, or his effort, you see, uh, being awarded Nobel Prize uh, in physics in 1965. So with another two uh, researchers as well. Uh. Uh, so for him, you see, um, in his talk, uh, so in his part, uh, he's a person who like to uh, visit uh, a different uh, conferences as well, you see, to share his work. So he, what uh, in one of his talk, you see, he claimed that challenged the scientific community you see, to think small in terms of solving future problems. Uh, that's where it actually uh, ignite the passion of a lot of researchers. They say, oh, what will happen is you will have something small scale, but you can solve big problems. So, and then of course, he actually uh, have books. Uh, he write a lot. Uh, he actually wrote some books as well. And then, uh, uh, those books have been uh, currently uh, been uh, captured. You can actually find in the uh, Encyclopedia uh, Britannica uh, where we can actually. So uh, inside, uh, we in his book. So he's actually talked a lot about uh, his point of view. You see about this engineering, uh, and then he you know that uh, scientists uh, have to work together with the engineers. You see, uh, so that to develop uh, a tool. You see that have the ability to see and manipulate atom and molecule. Uh, in order to solve problems uh, using technology. Uh, that is uh, basically his, uh, his opinion, uh, I would say. Okay, now brief history continue as well. Okay, atomic scale. So a computer image of the nano ice double helix. Now this is an image, you see, of snow or, or ice, I would say. So what happened is that um, you're using um, spectroscopy, a machine uh, to, to draw out, scan it, and then they're trying to find out the molecule. Now, this is actually, we know that more, uh, water is, is H2O. So you have an oxygen atom there and then two hydrogen uh, that bond onto it. So, so it's a very nice uh, structure, is it? Once the computer uh, generate the image, is it? Generated the image. So in the nano ice image, uh, oxygen atom are blue in the inner helix, purple in the outer helix, and then hydrogen atoms are white. So Feynman, uh, uh, the uh, same, a researcher, the physicist. So he discussed uh, how matter is it at the atomic scale behave differently than matter at the macroscopic scale. Uh, then of course, he talked about quantum mechanics uh, as opposed to a larger system, which are governed by the classic Newtonian mechanics. So it's actually share a lot of theories and concepts is it, about these uh, nanomaterials. Okay, then another thing is it, um, again, uh, another uh, research historical work is actually by um, top mentioned, is it by Eric Dressler? Uh, so he's actually again a researcher as well uh, and author books. Uh, uh, so where it terms that he coined, is it the term grey goo, the potential problem of self-replicating and autonomous artificial intelligent machine. Now this is an example of a DNA damage, and then somehow our system do have a machinery, we call it a self-machinery system to repair it. Uh, so this is actually one of the uh, earliest, uh, uh, maybe you may say a hypothesis, you see, by the researcher claim that in our cells, you see, we do have nanobots. Uh, we do have this nanotechnology uh, because if not, our self will not be replicating. 
our gene who have been damaged or there's an error in replicating, it will continuous uh, deteriorate. Uh, so therefore, you see, to prevent all these problems, our cells create that system to repair it so that all our gene is in perfect form. Uh, so this is where uh, we talk about, you see, the uh, start of nanotechnology, even our body cells, you see, do have it as well. Okay. And now, of course, again, Eric Dressler, he continues as well. He claimed that the uh, cell repair mechanism uh, do actually is part of nanotechnology as well. So by working along molecule, by molecule and structure, so repair machine will be able to repair the whole cells, you see. Uh, so we'll be able to repair the whole organ as well and then restore our health. Uh, so imagine that Dressler, uh, Eric Dressler, uh, claimed this statement, you see, in the 1986. Okay, now, measurement of equipment uh, is the cornerstone of nanotech. So we have this scanning probe microscope system uh, from nanoscience instrument. So from uh, by using this type of machine, you see, uh, we can actually start detecting what's the shape or what's the pattern, you see, of the uh, nano uh, materials or the, na the so-called nano yeah, the nano materials, uh, the shape of it. Okay, now. Um, Bucky Boss, uh, this is actually um, one of the product, I would say, that, that actually developed or discovered, you see, by three gentlemen. Uh, so we have Harold, and then uh, we have Robert Cole and Richard. Uh, so of course, um, this product uh, later on, is it awarded uh, Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1996. Uh, so it's a discovery of a new composition of carbon. Uh, we call it as a carbon-60. Uh, why carbon-60? Because there's a 60 carbon molecule that actually attached together. And then why it's called buckyball? So it actually looks like a footballer. Uh, so and then this is an example of the uh, Nobel Prize uh, for the, uh, the diploma. So imagine one day, you see, if you manage to get a Nobel Prize, uh, so this is something that uh, look like that, a certificate, you see, you will receive. Uh, Okay, now, um, so of course, um, buckyballer can be used to form carbon nanotube. And then later on, the nanotube can be used to form transistor. And then depending on their configuration, uh, the, the uh, buckyball also can be made to be conductor or insulator. Uh, so these are actually quite um, essential, you see, for electronic um, industry. Eh? Okay, and then another um, product known as fullerene as well. So it's a carbon-60 uh, named after Richard Buckminster Fuller, uh, who went to the name with the well, Bucky. Lah. So of course, the uh, later on uh, in Montreal, so there's a doom actually created uh, based on the Bucky ball shape as well, uh, the carbon-60. Okay, so of course, this is uh, Fuller's uh, most noted architecture design. Lah. Uh, so the, uh, we call it as the geodesic dome. Uh, so of course, it's a very rigid construction, very strong in terms of its weight uh, to its volume as well. Uh, so this is a very, so we show that, you see, uh, how uh, strong is this uh, buckyball. Okay, now application, uh, nanomedicine. So just now we talk about a bit origin and so on, you see, history about it. And then now um, we'll share about some application uh, in nanomedicine. So nanotech, you see, apply uh, medically. So a new breakthrough in medicine, for example, let's say advanced biomedical research tool, labor to experiment, study of DNA and its component gene, diagnostic tool, uh, a test, in bone implant also can be used as well. Okay, drug delivery method. Uh, this is actually one of the most popular uh, for nanotechnology. So sample uh, method, we have smart drugs, Nano composite hydrogel system and magnetic nanoparticles. Of course, uh, we will talk about what is exactly drug delivery. Uh, smart drug, you see, what it does is that it will attack specific antigen, uh, immunotoxin that are protein in nature, consists of an antibody part of the toxic part. So we can see that the uh, how exactly the antibody will bind with the toxin, and then after that, it will show that you see things that have been working out how to going to suppress it. So, of course, now even 
the drug delivery lah. Uh, if, why there, there's this image you see you show a tiny brain uh, it seems that everything is being computed like that uh, so what it does is that once it find uh, located is uh, target enemy you see or, or target site you see then it will start actually uh, solve it and then uh, bind with it and then try to clear it out from our cells uh. okay then for nano composite hydrogel system uh, so thermal therapeutic process release drugs that are encapsulated on heating and then the most common one is gold nanoparticles then ideal wavelength is between 800 to 1200 nanometer okay so of course there's actually a shock uh, this is actually a link you see for a youtube about drug delivery uh, so those who are interested you can actually click it so it actually is uh, is a movie clip by new south wales university team uh, it showed that how exactly the uh, nanotech, you see, uh, why it does is that it, it, the gold nanoparticle especially uh, look target the uh, cancer cells. Uh, so we will try to locate the cancer cells and then it will attack, or I would say like, like surround the cancer cells uh, and then to solve it. Okay, this cartoon actually show that the uh, a rat that been uh, actually have these cancer cells. So inside this uh, syringe, it has two drugs. So one is called metformin and the other one is fluorouracil. So fluorouracil is, is actually anti-cancer drugs. Metformin is a drug that control sugar level. Now, because we know that drugs is it, love sugar. So once in the, in the presence of this metformin, that sugar level will drop, uh, then the cancer cell uh, will, not, uh, will no longer have this uh, extra sugar you see, to, for them to grow. So, and then this fluorouracil uh, will cover it uh, so that surrounding it and then slowly this cancer cell is a green one. So you see that once the, um, the drugs you see, has been injected into it, now it slowly become smaller and smaller. Uh, so that what, what, what happened is that the uh, gold nanoparticles uh, uh, will surround it and then until eventually at the end, you see, destroy it or it can be removed through surgery. Uh, so that's what that's an example of the uh, advancement. Uh. Okay, disease detection. So we can, for example, let's say detect cancer or virus. Uh, and then uh, another type of gene detection is using silicon nanowires. Uh, so we can measure, you see, uh, where the cancer cells is. See. Okay, now carbon nanotube uh, also can be used for cancer virus detection. And then uh, carbon nanotube is the cover with monoclonal antibody. So you have your antibodies actually located in there. Uh, on the surface of it and thereafter antibody for growth factor receptor will commonly found in cancer cells and then uh, current uh, increase will measure so they will use energy voltage you see now silicon nanowire similar in use to nanotube as well antibody will attach to the wire electric change will be measured and then can be applied to cancer cells and viruses as well okay so these are example huh? so we have conductance so conductance is like uh, check the voltage the energy so this way we have antibody. Uh, then after that, if let's say there's a virus, let's say, or cancer that's actually passing through, and then it will attach to the nano nanowires. So we can see that there's a change of energy current. Uh, so once it's actually the virus is detected, uh, then after that, we will know that at that particular time, you see, uh, there's a peak, and then that particular peak is the cancer cells or, or the uh, virus. Okay, go nanoparticles or nanodots uh, and nanodots are uh, similar application as well. So antibody attached to the nanoparticles and then nanoparticle antibody will bind to the cancer cells. So of course the color will reflect it when lights hit particles. So shape and size will affect the color. So we can see here, see, this is what well, example of the uh, the application of go nanoparticle in different type of form. You see, so for example, let's say nanocube. Uh, so where you can actually bind with the, uh, well, if let's say you have gold nanoparticle matrix, uh, so all these are for the uh, DNA, uh, nucleic acid, acid delivery. And then for branch type gold nanoparticles, so you can use for photothermal therapy, let's say UV light. You uh, and nano shell, it can be a, act as an adjuvant. And then, uh, yeah, for dye, for imaging, so it will be on the corolla nano structure, so it's like clump. So all these is a different type of form will give you, can, you will have, may have different type of functions and application. So silicon nanowire can detect specific gene as well. Nucleic acid attached to the nanowire, specific sequence can be created. 
and that sensor will capable of differentiating a mutated type or non-mutated type because uh, it's very specific uh, and then PCR does not need because um, those even now you see current uh, studies you see we do depends on PCR machine polymerase chain reaction so what it does is that we have to primer run across to amplify it and then you know that which of this gene uh, is actually mutated uh, not the same as the original uh, mother template but for the silicon nanowire you see it take a very short time use the uh, current energy to uh, run across it and then they will know which uh, this gene you see is actually mutated actually quite interesting i would say okay for imaging as well uh, the conventional method we have x-ray mri fluoroscopy cat scan you see limitation limited detail difficult to track movement so for example let's say uh, if you look at the uh, a cancerous tumor uh, so we can see that in the normal lung there's nothing there if let's say a cancerous tumor will be in our lung there's something there but of course through the conventional technique it's like very blur images uh, but using the uh, nanotechnology you see you can see that this image will become much more clearer uh, it will even give more high definition as well or resolution Okay, now tracking ima uh, imaging application. So we have tracking blood flow, cancer imaging. So for example, tracking blood flow, we can see that all these hemoglobin, uh, our red blood cells, you see, have all these small tiny dot, 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 dot. Now all these, you see, is actually not gold nanoparticles. Uh, so why, is go, uh, why there's uh, actually gold nanoparticle in our blood vessel? Uh, it's actually to tag the protein of the cell with it and then uh, to build the process of angiogenesis. Uh, because it's important for cancer detection and imaging as well. Uh, so we can use gold nanoparticle to do that. And then cancer imaging. Uh, so we have this injection of gold nanoparticles. So pre-injections like this, and then post-injection, uh, we can see that where the location, you see, of the cancer cells, uh, uh, localize the tumor around the tumor, and then the CT scanner will show you the cancerous region. A possible concern about uh, using this uh, nanotechnology so of course there's some negative biological side effect because one of the most important thing is about toxicity uh, because there's uh, all metals uh, are actually toxic to uh, to environment and us but of course small amount is okay uh, not more than a certain amount you say a concentration of metals and then of course the uh, another thing is that effects on living organism not well known yet because uh, there have been a lot of studies show that certain um, uh, type of uh, metal oxide nanoparticles, you see, they are actually good to us. Uh, but then there are certain selective metals, you see, they are not. And then how bad towards these metal to our organs is still another question. Okay, so gold nanoparticles, uh, of course, it's it been claimed by researchers as well. Uh, it's much more safer because they are inert. Uh, they are compared to other type of metal, let's say zinc or ions. And then, of course, once it, uh, since it's inert, so it won't interact with other chemicals. For example, let's say drugs. We uh, in our cells. Uh. Okay, now we are actually near the end of the presentation. Uh. So, of course, uh, the last few slides is actually mentioned about the uh, synthesis method, the pathway, how these gold uh, nanoparticles uh, can be actually created within our lab or industry lab. Uh. Okay, now um, these are more towards chemistry. So chemical method, we call this. This one known as colloidal method. So colloidal chemical method uh, is the uh, most useful, easiest and cheapest way to create nanoparticles. Um, utilize both organic, inorganic reactants. So um, typically metal salt is required. So to reduce the uh, living nanoparticles, evenly dispersed in the liquid. And then after that aggregation is prevented by electrostatic repulsion or the introduction of a stabilizing reagent that coat the particle surface. Particle size can be ranged from one to 200 nanometer and are controlled by the initial concentration of the reactant and the action of the stabilizing reagent. So common method to prepare these, uh, for example, let's say gold nanoparticles involve combining uh, chemicals such as hydrogen, tetra, chloro, aurat, and sodium citrate. Upon this uh, dissociation, uh, the citrate ion will reduce the aurum 2 plus uh, to yield 30 to 40 nanometer gold particles. So these are the half equation of it. And then the uh, general flow, uh, chemical flow chart, uh, 
Uh, so for example, let's say, how do we know whether our gold nanoparticle has been successfully synthesized? It's actually based on the color. Uh, initially, you see, uh, our gold color, uh, uh, the uh, aurum 3 plus, uh, uh, it's like a slightly gold color, gold salt. And then after that, once it being uh, reduced all the way to the uh, metallic gold, so it become a slightly, uh, how to say, um, red color. So this is the uh, formation of the gold nanoparticle. So we can see that the change of the nucleation of it, the seed crystal, and then the growth of the nanoparticle. Slowly later on, you see, it can either form spherical nanoparticles or even a nanorods. Uh, so, of course, each of these type of the uh, complexes, uh, or you may say the crystal, you see, uh, can be used for different type of the uh, application. Okay, now, uh, chemical method, you see, although uh, a lot is quite much easier, you see, to prepare our gold nanoparticles. Now, some people, you see, or some researcher, they find out that um, since it's actually a chemical method, the nano gold nanoparticles, see, which actually successfully form, you see, do still may have toxic because it's chemical. Now, so later on, you see, uh, I think cut 10, about 20, 30 years back. So what happened is that researcher, you see, focus more towards green synthesis. Now, when we talk about green synthesis, it is using biology uh, sample, biological sample. So usually it could be plant material or plant waste. Uh, depend, you see, which of these uh, target sample that we try to look at. So for example, let's say, you see, for the uh, gold nanoparticles, and this example of research, you see, using tamarind fruit. Uh, asam Jawa, isn't it? So tamarind pulp, lah. so what it does is that take out the pulp and then uh, extract it, aqueous extract, and then after that it mix with the uh, chemical for the gold one, the gold chloride, uh, aluminum chloride, then after that uh, you form gold nanoparticles and then through the uh, scanning method or characterization uh, you find out that actually this method do work. And then what's the best thing about green synthesis is that the biogenic uh, we call it biogenic because it's true biological or green synthesis uh, using the uh, plant material sample, you see, to re reduce it, you see, to form this uh, metal oxide, you see, or gold nanoparticles. They are much more safer and less toxic. So these days, um, a lot of researchers, even in my research lab, we've been using green synthesis method as well uh, to create uh, different sort of metals. Uh, like, for example, let's say recently we have this... Um, Publish a paper about uh, copper oxide nanoparticles using papaya peel waste. Uh, and then uh, from there, you see, we can actually use it to treat a palm oil meal effluent or wastewater. Uh, so, so we can find out that there's an 80 plus to 90 percent of the uh, improvement in terms of the water quality. Uh, so, we can see this is the, the way you see of this green pathway, you see, uh, to create these our metal oxide nanoparticles. Okay, so uh, that's it uh, for my talk. Um, so I'll stop sharing here To So I believe that now is a Q&A session. Uh, so I'll, I'll pass it back to uh, Mr. Tam then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the doctor there. And now let me to share back my slide first. Give me a second. Okay, thank you again for um, Dr. Pei to have the great sharing with us. So now we are come to the Q&A sessions. So if you have any questions, you can just drop it to the chat box and we will pick it up and uh, answer only. For further, uh, we also already stand by the evaluation forms at the chat box. You can, um, you can just go to the chat box, click and fill up the relation form for us to provide us your feedback for this uh, sharing. Okay, now we come to the questions. Hi, Dr. Tan. So, um, since you talk about the nanoparticles, the nanotechnology, right, is it? As, um, and just now your slide is showing us about the side effect. So is there any like the um, toxicity level of the biogenic metal oxide nanoparticles? Okay, thanks, Mr. Tam. 
Yes, now, uh, because there's a lot of concern, you see, about metal oxide nanoparticles or nanotech, you see. Now, of course, um, biological type of the biogenic, you see, we cannot guarantee that there are no toxic. Uh, it's just a matter of the starting material that we use, you see, is much more safe, you see, less toxic, less harmful towards uh, us and environment. So maybe let's say comparing, uh, for example, let's say, um, Maybe zinc oxide nanoparticle, let's say, if we are using chemical uh, synthesis method, the toxic level, you see, maybe we'll say around 50 ppm. So we have mentioned about around 50 milligram per liter. So in a small amount, you see, it's really toxic to us. But for the biogenic type, which is a green synthesized type, um, the toxicity level, you see, could, really, could improve to around, let's say, uh, 1,000 ppm. Uh, so from 50 to 1,000, uh, we can see the difference. About 20 times, you see. So therefore, we can we can see this. There's an improvement of uh, is is safe to be con uh, used uh, or being exploited uh, for for us uh. So how is the possible side effect uh, as imagine like maybe like to our health or some? Okay. There's a, you see, certain studies show that uh, once it teach, uh, if let's say our skin accidentally exposed to it, uh, it may cause allergic, eczema, uh, rashes, uh, and like a burning sensation as well. Uh, and then of course, if you accidentally consume it, because metal uh, will actually do have some effects to our uh, central nervous system. So sometimes suddenly you may like cut off our respiration system and our reflex as well. Uh, that that's the uh, metal toxicity, and then of course our brain. If too much metal as well, it may cause uh, our um, uh, brain start uh, become slowly a uh, slow response, and then maybe even loss of memory. Um, imagine Alzheimer disease. Alzheimer disease is actually due to uh, aluminium and copper iron as well, metal iron. Uh, so these are example of the uh, toxicity. You see? Okay, so actually for us, right, most of us actually is uh, first know the nanotechnology through the movies, okay? And the movies running us a good pictures, like how fancy the sound you showing us, right, is it? So in case, right, is it, um, we have actually, is it possible that we are overdrawing the good pictures of a nanotechnology? Okay, now, um, how is it? Movie, of course, can, like showing the good side of it, you see, about what is nanotechnology and its application. But of course, um, reality, everything is still under study. Uh, whether, whether we can actually, because it's like, if we look at current application or electronic gadget, you see, or even our latest, if you buy, I think recently I bought my a laptop, you see, and then you will see, uh, even hard disk, uh, it's now we have this solid state drive. So all these are because of, uh, nanotechnology, you see. So imagine those days, your hard disk is very heavy. Uh, and then now your, your, your hard disk see, is getting smaller and smaller, like, like a slight thin piece of wafer, you see, uh, like wafer, wafer stick or tablet. Uh. So, so you, you, you can imagine the improvement, you see, the quality of the uh, of our life, you see. Uh, so, so you can imagine that, of course, there could be more advantage than disadvantage. Uh, but but we need to be again you see we need to have a concern about uh, what we are actually trying to exploit you see uh, so that that's the main main things uh, that we need to concern okay so um is there other application uh, applications um other than uh, the nano medicine that we are using of course so for example let's say uh, agriculture uh, as i previously stated in the slide so like improve the quality of the uh, the food like, or, or the plant, uh, the products, and then uh, wastewater treatment also use uh, nanotechnology as well. Uh, and then of course, um, again, industry uh, for those uh, doing the uh, electronics, uh, uh, they've been using uh, nanotech as well. And then uh, we even have the uh, bricks uh, construction, uh, construction of building as well, is it? Or even uh, they, they've been using nanotechnology, composite, a new type of metals, you see, to, to build that uh, materials, you see. Okay, so um, since it's quite a uh, useful uh, new technology, right? Is it quite in, in Malaysia? Are we now um, starting to use the nanotechnology in Malaysia? Actually, they are, you see. Now, 
uh, again in the presentation I, I mentioned that there's a, a board you see or it's actually the board is a company that known as Nano Malaysia Bahad. Uh, so this company you see of course uh, it's like a semi government thingy lah. So it has over more than 60 uh, intellectual property. So developed by local company. And then there are 113 products in the area of viral transmission. So therefore, um, they claim, you see, uh, they can able to uh, assist uh, different sectors in our country, you see, uh, which actually affected by COVID-19. So for example, let's say, you see, um, nanotechnology uh, can help to improve passenger confidence, you see, in health safety in the airline industry through the rapid screening or diagnostic system that can be placed at airport. So we know that uh, who have the uh, possible of this uh, high temperature and then maybe they have certain viruses, you see, inside their bodies, you see. Uh, and then of course, those uh, antiviral nano coating, uh, aeroplane interior as well. Uh, and then of course, I think reason um, during the Chinese New Year, I forgot it last year or this year, the advertisement, uh, they claim that even uh, the pawn pain, you see, they are, they are so-called virus guard, yeah? uh, those are nanotechnology using silver, silver nanoparticles. Okay, so how about in Utah? Do we have started any, any research that in Utah about the nanotechnology? Uh, yeah, we, we've been actually, uh, I think five, six years ago, I think about 10 years plus, right? I think some, some researchers have been doing it. And then uh, it have been about 10 years already, you see, been going on about this uh, nanotechnology. So actually we've been, uh, there's a few publications been going on as well. Uh, and then of course we do have um, postgraduate, you see, working on the uh, nanoparticles as well, yeah. Yeah, yes, we do, we do have. So we will come future students, you see, uh, to join our lab as well, yeah. So now this actually under the master and PhD level, right, is it? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. So, because what we happen is we all the lecturers or well, like us, so we do uh, need to uh, apply research funding from uh, either internally or externally. So internally, usually Utah will give us, uh, we'll, we'll basically we known as Utah RF, the research funding. So, and then uh, external will be, let's say the government grant like, like FRGS or, or the MOSTI grant. So yes, we, we do apply them and then we manage to get some money from it and then we uh, em well, do employ students yeah, as a, as a part of the uh, so-called core researcher la, uh, working into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not something new, you see. So, so, so yes, we, we do have uh, funding for uh, postgraduate students, you see, as an allowance. Uh, of course, com by comparing with other university, I think currently Utah is, the, is quite generous, you see. <laughs> so, so those who are um, interested, you see, to uh, pursue math postgraduate program, you see, at Utah, you see, I, I would say you, you actually, uh, you have uh, do the best choice, you see. <laughs> uh, the best way, I would say, if you, if, you, if you do that, yeah. Okay, now we come to another questions. So um, this one is quite professional questions. Yes. It's like, uh, as compared to the chemical reduction synthesis route, do the metallic nanoparticles that fabric through the biological route, example, like the using foot pill, as reducing and the stabilizing agents, is it more stable? Stable in terms of, now it depends on the materials uh, that we use, you see, because we have been trying various of target samples as well to uh, perform the uh, green synthesis material, you see. So therefore, um, not all materials, you see, will able to reduce the metal, you see, to form metal oxide nanoparticles. Uh, so therefore, again, you see, you need to depend on whether that particular sample, you see, do have that metal or not, or whether they have any affinity uh, towards that particular matter. Uh, so, so we need to uh, be carefully select our target sample as well. Okay, since we talk about this, so is there any outcome that actually the Utah is um, already is published about this uh, topic, the nanotechnology? You mean the uh, any potential outcomes? Yes, we yeah, yeah. IP. We do not have any IP. I think <laughs> maybe I'm not sure about FES, but F science. FEGT, we, we are actually working on it as well. Uh, we do have, as I stated, we, we have this uh, publication regarding wastewater treatment. 
uh, let's say palm oil mill effluent. Even now we're working on landfill uh, leachate as well using the uh, metal oxide nanoparticles. Uh, so, so these are things that we are slowly uh, developed, uh, we'll say. Okay, since we now it's uh, already like 5 p.m., right? So yep. let us go through the last one, the last questions. So um, as your concerns, um, uh, as your advice, so um, is there any advantage like if um, enrolled to the Master of Science or PhD in the Utah? Okay, now um, maybe a lot of students, uh, especially the undergrad, you see, um, they may have, um, how to say, a phobia, you see, for, from their undergraduate level, you see, but please, uh, those are undergraduate level. So in as once you become uh, enrolled yourself as a postgrad, you see, you you hardly have any lectures anymore. You do not have to sit the exam. You see, uh, when you come to the end of the semester, the only thing that you need to bother you see, is to finish off your project and then uh, submit. Of course, attend your uh, work com uh, sorry proposal defense and then work com at the end of it, or which is viva as well later on. Uh, that's the only things that you need to care you see bother about it but of course i know that um based from my experience uh, i have some students as well um what they did is that they say they are seniors they try to uh, scare them about how scary is doing postgrad at utah um depend your luck i'll say so if the project uh, milestone is can be achieved uh, easily uh, then that means that no challenge one so of course uh we we expecting you see that you actually will, uh, the student uh, will uh, achieve something while they are actually trying to uh, cruise uh, in their so-called post-grad program, you see. Uh, so of course, we, we still expect something, uh, but at the end, um, you you get a lot of stuff, benefit, uh, I would say. We do have conferences, every year conference uh, organized to students, uh, let them join in. And then of course, uh, students also free to join any international conferences as well, because, uh, each researcher, you see, may have some small funding, you see, to uh, sponsor the student to attend conferences. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Anyway, thank you for another day to have the share with us today. And we are now almost to the end. Let me uh, come to the closing. Okay. Um, okay. Um, before we um, end of the, today's webinar, uh, let me introduce you about the ITS, the Institute of Postgraduate Studies and Research. So if you happen to um, have any interest to um, enroll to the Master of Science or even the PhD of Science, then you can just uh, submit the applications to IPSR, or if you have any further inquiry, you can just check with us the Division of Program Promotions or the ITSR. So the IPSR is the divisions that are um, in charge of the applications, enrollments, and um, or of the matters during your postgraduate period. So just a general knowledge of you about the Utah master study. In fact, we have a course mode, we have a mixed mode, and we have a research mode. The master of science that's um, offering by the faculty of science is um, basically the research mode. You can do whatever the topic you want as long as you have the scholars to guide you. Okay, others, we, what we still have is like the mostly are in the course mode is the MBA, the information system, mathematics, or the other like engineering construction management. Okay. And this is what I'm showing to you is the uh, master under the mixed mode, the uh, IO psychology and communications, even the Chinese study. And definitely we have plenty of a research mode, uh, postgraduate programs, including the master and the PhD. So, uh, not only under the science, if you are from other sectors, for example, like you are from the social science, you are from the mass comm level, you can also pursue to the different um, the professionals through um, accordingly, according to your background. Okay, so there's plenty that we're offering, like the master of science, the engineering, the uh, the medical science, the um, business, the other science. Okay, English. Definitely, because all of our, all of the uh, programs, the master and PhD programs, that are uh, usually we are conducted through the English. So you need to fulfill at least one of the English requirements. Usually, uh, the in standard there should be the weights at least band three. 
the entry requirements. Okay, so the entry requirements. So if you have the CGPA in 2.75 or above, then you can um, enroll to the uh, master of science in field cut way. Or if you have the CGPA is achieved the first class level, or right, number like 3.67 above the CGPA, then in fact, you can directly apply to the PhD without the master. If your result is 2.5, in between 2.5 to 2.75, then it's still eligible to apply, but then you go through the assessment. Lastly, if your result is in between 2.0 to 2.5, then you still need at least five years working experience for the applications of the master. And appeal. Some of our programs actually is allowed to apply through the appeal. So um, in details, this is the program that is allowed through the appeal, the business admins, the uh, project management, information system, communications, mathematics, and engineering. Okay. So the appeal, what is the meaning of the appeal? Actually, that means that even you do not have a bachelor degree, you are only the diploma holder, you can still go through the master without sitting for the bachelor degree, as long as you have the appeal. So this is uh, a next coming intake of Earth for the coursework and the mixed mode. Despite for the Master of Science prize, it, it is throughout the year because it's a research mode. For the research mode, we do not set the actual enroll date. From January to December, you can submit the applications any times, but you need to submit it together with a research proposal. Means that in advance before that, you need to confirm what is the topic you would like to go through or what to go through during the master studies. Okay, the coming up next. In fact, all right, and now uh, we every the uh, every week the Friday we have the um webinars and the, sometimes in the Saturday we also have the webinars. So the coming up next um at next Friday, what we have is the students sharing journeys, the students sharing, okay. This is a sharing by our construction management students on next Friday, the 5th of March, same as the 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So um, in the last, if you have any uh, further inquiry you would like to share with us, you can just uh, approach us through our Facebook, the Utah for you. And if um, you are missing out to this webinars and you would like to back um, against our webinars, you can just uh, go through our channel, the Facebook channel, in front for you to have the um, to go through it. And for the inquiry, you can also share us through the WhatsApp or the WeChat. Even you can have a live chat with us through the, our website, the study .my. Every Monday to Sunday. Uh, 9 p.m. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have the clicks standby to serve you through the live chat. And the last, you also can send the email to us for any inquiry. So this we come to the end of the webinar. Thank you for joining us today again. And um, see you again on next week. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you very much, all of you. And uh, take care and bye bye. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Tan. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.